Today we're gonna talk about camera settings for insect macro photography. I am going to walk you through all the most important settings that I have on my OM1 camera for macro photography. And I'm also gonna walk you through what settings I use on my Godox V350 flash. Let's actually start with the flash because this thing is the most easy to configure. You only need to know about two settings basically. First you set the flash in manual mode which is signified by an M which will look like this. The M at the top there says manual mode. All flashes have manual mode and manual mode just means that you set the strength of the flash manually. And this is what I typically want to do when I'm doing insect macro photography. And what I do is I always begin by setting it at 1 16th in strength. And this goes for most on camera flashes out there. It's a good starting point. And of course you need to combine the flash with a good diffuser as well. I suggest using the AK diffuser that I'm using, but there are other ones as well. And then when you get out in the field and you take your first photo, you will immediately see if it is overexposed or underexposed. And you just adjust the flash accordingly. If it is too bright, you decrease the strength to maybe one over 32. And if it is too dark, you increase the strength to maybe 1 over 8. And that is all you need to know basically about configuring the flash. Some people also ask about the like focal length settings that many flashes have. And I usually answer that you should set it to as wide as possible. Uh, because that means that the light from the flash will be spread out a bit more and you want... Uh, a big light source from your flash to get a softer and nicer light. But uh, I don't think it makes that much of a difference for macro photography, so basically I never care about that setting. So that's it for the flash. Now let's dive into the camera menus. I have connected my camera with a cable so I can record the display and show you easier how everything looks. And I'm basically just gonna walk through the menu showing all the options that I think are important for insect macro photography. And uh, of course you can apply these things to any Olympus camera. The menus look slightly different on the older ones, uh, but the principles are the same. So on the first menu here, the most important thing is that you shoot in raw. Superfine plus raw is what I have defined here. And that is of course to get the best possible image quality and the best possible uh, ability to uh, edit your photos afterwards. And one thing that I've always used for macro photography that I think is really nice is the image review feature. Basically this means that whenever I have taken a photo it will display that photo in my viewfinder for two seconds so that I can see how it looks. And for me this is super important because I almost kind of use this as a way of focusing. I take the shot, setting the focus where I think it should be and then I immediately see the final result so I can see if I got the focus right or not. So for me it's kind of a help with focusing and also to see that everything else about the image looks good or if the framing is good or bad. I, I just like having this image review setting. So when it comes to white balance I have it set at 6000 Kelvin when I'm not using a flash. I like to have it set at a set point so that it never changes. It makes the images more consistent in the look so when you're editing you can apply the same edit to all your photos and it will kind of make the same effect. Also if you're focus stacking it's important that all the photos have the same white balance. So I think it's very good in macro photography to always set uh, a value that is constant for the white balance. And as you can see here the white balance when using a flash I have set to 5500 Kelvin. Which is around the color temperature of your flash. So it's good to match the two to get a neutral looking uh, photo out of the camera. I think actually most flash heads is uh, at 5600 Kelvin. Uh, but yeah, 5500 is close enough. A lot of people ask me about flash settings. Uh, I usually never change these, I just use the defaults. If you're interested you can look here. I have synchronization on the first curtain, whatever that means, works for me. Uh, drive mode, I just 
used the standard single shot drive mode, but of course I use focus bracketing in some situations and I will talk more about that in a moment. When it comes to autofocus, I just use usually continuous autofocus, sometimes I use single autofocus. And I use that as a baseline and then I typically adjust with manual focus or I use the, the focus clutch on my lens. Uh, but most of the time with this camera I just use back button autofocus and adjust by moving the camera. I will talk about in a moment how I have configured that. And I also want to underline that there are a lot of settings that I don't know what they do. I have only changed the ones that I care about and that I know what they do, otherwise I just keep to the defaults for everything else. Autofocus target mode, I think I usually use this one the most, the cross. I usually just have like a, a set point in the middle that works well for me. Manual focus assist is always interesting uh, when it comes to macro photography. I usually rely on focus peaking uh, and I actually have a button binded for turning that off and on. I will show you in a moment. Now we're getting into button settings uh, and this uh, first uh, option here is uh, the functions when you're in um, stills mode and that is what I'm typically in when I'm doing macro photography. As you can see here I have changed the binding on a few buttons. Uh, for uh, this button I have set manual focus so I can quickly switch to manual focus. Actually I pretty much never use this button anyway, uh, but yeah. Uh, video recording I have on the default button. ISO I have on the default button. I think it's nice to have a dedicated button on the camera to change the ISO because I typically want to do that manually. When I'm shooting macro photography for insects with a flash, I'm always at ISO 200, which is the native ISO for this camera. Because the flash will take care of the lighting, I will get enough light from the flash, so why use a higher ISO than necessary? Uh, here is uh, how I have set up the back button autofocus. I have it on this button here, uh, so whenever I'm um, pushing it, I autofocus. And I have uh, decoupled it from the shutter button, so that... Uh, the shutter button, pressing it halfway or the whole way will never change the focus point. And to make sure that you really have back button autofocus, you need to disable focusing when half pressing the shutter. And you find that setting here, AF by half pressing shutter. And of course turn it to no uh, for all the focusing modes that you're interested in using. And then on this camera there are two small buttons on the front here these two and uh, I have binded the top one to activate and deactivate focus bracketing. So this is a very nice thing to have binded to a button. Uh, if I want to do a focus stack I just push this button and I do the focus stack and then I can switch back to singles mode because that is what I use most of the time. Uh, the bottom button here I have binded to focus peaking turning that on and off because sometimes it can be in the way so it's nice to be able to easily turn it off. And then on the side button here on my lens I have binded that one to uh, change the focusing area if you want to do that. So for whatever reason I couldn't reach certain menus in the camera when I was uh, using the HDMI out to record my screen. <laughs> so I'm doing uh, coverage of these menus right now. Uh, a couple of important settings here. For the viewfinder, uh, you want to use the right option here, SOVF. The difference is that with the SOVF option, uh, the viewfinder will always look bright, even if it isn't really that bright in reality. Uh, if you use the other option, uh, the standard here, uh, the viewfinder will often look very dark when you're doing macro photography. So uh, use the right option here. This corresponds to the setting effect off on Sony cameras. Then we want to look at the uh, focus stacking settings. So as I told you I have bound it to one of the front buttons. I'm gonna push it now. And now I turned on the focus bracketing. So important to note here is that I'm not using the focus stacking option in the menu on the camera. Uh, this is the option where the camera will take a few pictures and try to combine them itself. And uh, 
I much prefer doing it via the other way, which is to use the focus bracket function here, which I have activated right now. As I told you, I have it bound to a button on the front of the camera, so I can very easily turn it off and on. Uh, the nice thing with using this instead of the uh, focus bracketing is that, or sorry, focus stacking, uh, is that uh, for this one you can uh, have a lot more shots in sequence. I have it default on 40, but what I typically do is I begin a stack by pressing the shutter and then when I feel that I have enough frames, I just press the shutter again and then it will stop uh, the action. So uh, I never have to take more photos than necessary. So you can have it at something high here, I have it at 40. Uh, that is more than enough pretty much always for me and for my stacks. And another very interesting option is of course the focus differential. This is how far does the focus move between each frame. And I have found that for me having it at 3 most of the time is a sweet spot. In 9 out of 10 stacks, if not more, maybe 95 out of 100, 3 is enough to cover well and to get a good stack if I just hold the camera steady and if just the, the subject is steady. Uh, for some very rare stacks you might need 1 or 2, but you always have to consider that the less the value you have here, the more photos you will have to take uh, to complete the stack and then you have the risk of the flash getting exhausted or the insect running away or something. So for me I think that 3 is a pretty good balance and usually it does the job for me even at 2 times magnification. I know that some macro photographers shoot at 1 or 2 but for most cases for me I think that's overkill actually. And for charge time, I just have it set to zero because my Godox V350 flash can handle this. It is pretty much always fast enough to, to be able to do fast sacks without any sleeping between shots. And sometimes it needs to rest and then it will stop for one or two seconds and then just continue the stack. And I think it's nice to just have it at zero here, which means that it will just stack as fast as the flash can handle. And that's pretty much it. I've gone through all the most important settings in my camera that I use to do macro photography uh, on insects. But we haven't really covered the most important settings, which is ISO, aperture and shutter speed. And I always have the shutter speed at 1 250th of a second unless I want to achieve something special. Uh, I think that is a great default for single shots, you can't go wrong with that. Sometimes you get a bit of a dark background and then you can lower it, uh, but 1 250th of a second is a good baseline. And of course, when you're doing the focus stacking or focus bracketing with these cameras, you always have an upper limit on the shutter speed. And on the OM-1 that upper limit is 100th of a second. So it's impossible to do stacking with these cameras at a higher shutter speed. And I know for some older versions of this camera, uh, the maximum uh, shutter speed is 1 50th of a second. And that will uh, of course be automatically limited when you switch into focus stacking mode. And uh, that's fine, the pictures come out nice anyway. Uh, actually when you're using a flash for macro photography, the shutter speed is not that important because the flash will be fast and it will freeze the action and stand for the majority of the light in the scene anyway. When it comes to aperture, uh, I typically shoot between f7 and f10 when I'm doing high magnifications, like very small insects. Uh, if I want to get extremely good sharpness, I shoot at f7.1. If I want good sharpness but slightly deeper depth of field, I shoot at f10 or f11. The difference in sharpness is not that great and the difference in uh, depth of field is also not that great. So typically I go between f7 and f10 or f11 when doing high magnification macro photography. And that's it for my camera settings. Do you have any suggestions on how I could improve them? Please let me know in the comments. And uh, do you have different settings for whatever reason? Please let me know as well about that. I'm interested to hear in how your settings differ from mine. See you soon again in another macro photography video.